Ladies and gentlemen, the outdoor season is here, and my gosh, it is something worth getting excited about. We're talking genetics and things to consider for your next grow outdoors. Guys, if you're just tuning in, I have grown outdoors one time before this, so I'm pretty much an expert. It wasn't a colossal failure. However, it was far from a success. I ended up growing these like eight foot tall, trees with like just a big stalk and just a couple stems out the side not a whole lot of yield and it was somewhat disappointing but I learned a lot in particular I learned how to select genetics for my environment here in central Canada there are a number of things to consider when it comes to what to think about before you plant these beans that comes down to when you plant them how you plant them how you maintain them and I want to talk about how to select the right genetics for your next growing season. Real quick, I want to mention, it, this is going to be differing information based on where you are on the planet. I am in a colder climate, therefore I need to take that into consideration when it comes to genetics that can resist those temperatures. And that's why a lot of my genetics end up turning purple or black or a little bit of pink with some oranges in there. A lot of fade based on temperature. Some people say those in California, might not have to worry about the swing in temperature. So your genetic selection might be easier. Taking the climate into consideration is a number one when it comes to selecting the right genetics. You don't want something that's meant for the Sahara Desert that you're growing in Canada, particularly somewhere cold like myself in central Manitoba. One thing to consider is the flowering time. Planting in my area happens on June 1st. June 1st is when the climate is the most stable. Therefore, you don't put anything in the ground until the risk of frost has been reduced. June 1st is a lot later in the in spring than some people are able to plant around the globe. California, might you might get away with maybe early May. We can't do that. We had snow this weekend for Memorial Day long. And I'm glad I didn't plant anything. So losing that first four to six weeks is detrimental to the flowering time of your particular genetic. So when you're selecting a genetic, understand how long you're going to have to flower that plant out. It's not unusual to see snow in October in my area. So I need something that's going to harvest very fast and it's going to be susceptible to that colder climate towards the end or beginning of October. That's where you might get off with either an auto flower or a fast flowering plant. One thing to consider as well is pests and mold. There's different pests in different parts of the globe and depending on where you're at, you need to understand which pests you are susceptible to. We've got gnats, we've got flies, we've got bees, we've got a number of pests that are going to essentially be an issue to my flowering stage if I don't take that into consideration. I also want something that's going to be resistant to mold. Because I've got those lower temperatures, it's not unusual to wake up to a heavy amount of dew on the ground. This is because you've got a warmer or a cooler night with a warmer morning or vice versa, re resulting in a bunch of dew or moisture covering the entire crop. Plants that aren't susceptible to mold will then be molding at this particular time. Try to make sure you're getting something that's stable. Genetic stability at this stage is so important. You're going to put a lot of time, effort, and energy into these plants. You definitely want to ensure that you're not going to be dealing with any kind of hermaphroditic or intersex traits. Understand what you're harvesting for. Are you looking for the higher THC? You're looking for CBDs? You want some CBGs, some CBNs? You want something that's going to speak to you? Understand your genetic and understand what you're trying to seek out from those flowers before you plant. Also consider things like yield. Are you looking for big flowers, little flowers? You want those high fl high resinous flowers? Yield's going to be very important. It's something that you can consider before you start planting genetics. Uh, I just recently harvested Chill Out OG. Although the buds were immaculate, they weren't the thickest, they weren't the biggest. So if you're going to be spending a lot of time outdoors trying to get some big heavy flowers for an entire winter season, perhaps you want something that yields a little bit more. Consider ease of grow. Don't grab something that's going to be difficult for you to handle. The reason is, is because, well, you're outdoors. There are going to be a number of variables already on the plate that you're going to have to deal with. And essentially, the 
toughness of that plant shouldn't be one of them. Don't get something that needs a lot of food. Don't get something that needs a lot of attention or care. Try to get something that's going to handle the climate, handle the environment, handle the bugs all on its own with just a little bit of your oversight. Now, where do you get your genetics? Well, there are a number of places. I would highly recommend looking local first. If there's something that's not local, can, ch can check out something like Seasman. Seasman's got you covered with a quality and array of genetics and, in fact, probably have genetics from breeders close to you. You can get just about anything. If you head on over, do a good search of their different genetics, whether it's autoflowers, whether it's flowers, whether it's you can check out the mutant genetics, you can check out their genetics, you can check out Barney Farms, they've got Humboldt, there's everything over there. You can also use promo code PIGEONS420, you'll save a few dollars off at checkout, and you'll help support the show, and in fact, you'll get yourself some quality genetics. They've got great descriptions on everything that you're looking for in regards to resiliency, the feeding, the flowering time. Go and check it out. Let me tell you, you won't be mistaken. Guys, these are things that I would consider and will consider before going out into the outdoor season. You can apply many of these same attributes to the indoor season as well. You want to make sure you're checking all these boxes to make sure that you're not blowing money because let's face it, genetics aren't cheap, particularly if you're not sourcing them from the right location. So make sure you're spending you're, you're using that hard-earned cash. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you for watching. I wish you a happy and luscious green growing season this year, and I hope you have some bountiful harvests. Until next time, my friends, much love and stay medicated. Peace.